it tells us that from the Prime Minister down through her cabinet and into the officials within immigration, within the police and then on to the judiciary that we are a soft touch, that we are far too liberal in accepting uh, people's claims about their refugee status and that this, uh, this situation, this, this multiple stabbing in the countdown at Lynmore could have been avoided if only judges and the police and various other people in immigration and indeed the cabinet of Jacinda Ardern's government had actually acted in the multiple instance, instances that the police and the intelligence agencies took to them begging them to act. They didn't and so they have blood on their hands. Well it's a good point what he was doing here in the first place. He arrived here in 2011 on a student visa. Uh, he was working from uh, reports that we've managed to obtain 50 hour weeks uh, when he was supposed to be on a student visa. Uh, two years after he arrived here he applied for refugee status it's clear that he lied about the refugee status and when he was found out about that he used the appeals process, the Womble judges and the court system to hold off being uh, chucked out of the country and in fact his case went before cabinet and he was, uh, it was suggested by the New Zealand first members of that cabinet that he be deported and that was opposed by the Prime Minister and the Labour members of the cabinet so you do have to wonder what he, what he was doing here after all this time. We're far too soft. From the Liberals that are in charge of the government to the Liberal judges, they're sopping wet, they're naive about these, these type of people. They are living in New Zealand, there's reported to be more than 45 of them, some of them under extremely close supervision by the police and the intelligence agencies. And uh, I believe that, that the politicians and the judges and the immigration department have got blood on their hands and they should have dealt with this guy in a far more urgent manner. Well, he wasn't just non-compliant in prison. He's actually on charges of assaulting corrections officers. So you, you do have to uh, wonder why numerous judges have basically give him a slap on the wrist with a wet bus ticket, a quick cuddle and then put him back on the streets. Those judges have got blood on their hands now. The immigration department hasn't acted uh, appropriately uh, and we see that the, despite the Prime Minister's claims that absolutely every legal avenue p was pursued to keep this guy off the streets, um, that's been proven to be a lie. The police didn't oppose bail uh, when he last appeared in the court and consequently a soft judge let him out with no GPS monitoring or anything else. It's a wonder he didn't commit the crime sooner. Well we're also missing the fact that in 2018 he applied to immigration to have his uh, visa uh, revoked and immigration for some strange reason uh, wouldn't allow that to occur and at the same time he also tried to leave New Zealand and was stopped at the border because they thought he was going to Syria to go and commit crimes. We should have just let him go and as soon as that plane left New Zealand shores we should have cancelled his visa and that would have been the last we've ever seen of him. Now seven people have been stabbed and are in hospital as a result of uh, really quite pathetic um, uh, behaviour from the Immigration Department. Uh, because we've got a system that's been you know, run by uh, sopping wet liberals who think that these people are just uh, poor hard done by um, people and that if we just give them a cuddle, um, uh, turn over a few pages of the Quran uh, and, and you know mouth some there there's and, and oh dear that's how sad they'll all come right they won't these are bad bastards and they commit crimes and if they're not committing crimes they're plotting to commit crimes uh, and you know we warned about this for years and years and years that there would be a serious knife attack you know what made the politicians the judges the immigration think 
that New Zealand was going to escape this when it has happened in almost every other country around the world that has practiced mass immigration from Islamic countries. The government will work very, very hard to hose down the calls for an inquiry. There is no way that Jacinda Ardern wants a public inquiry on this because a public inquiry will expose how closely she's known about the details of this. We know that she was briefed by the intelligence services on the 9th of August. It was just one month away from him committing his crime at the shopping centre. She's also had four other briefings from those uh, intelligence agencies about this one individual and it's also been to cabinet at least twice about this individual and in both times the cabinet that she leads had done nothing. So she can cry crocodile tears all she likes and say that she was acting and that other governments should have acted beforehand but the bottom line is that she's in power. Twice it went to cabinet to deal with this man twice they, uh, they kicked it to touch, and now seven people have been stabbed. The government won't want a public inquiry because they know it'll be damning of their own actions.